of 13, 14 other charts that I want to just go over quickly. We'll do them one after another. Okay, these are some of the, my favorite charts. I understand all this stuff, but now I have 13, 14 other charts that I want to just go over quickly. We'll do them one after another. Okay, these are some of the, my favorite charts. Some of the ones I've been in uh, on the long side on MP Trader. Some I were I was in, um, you know, early early in the year and got stopped out in the in the January decline. Uh, and uh, you know, for instance, like MGM. MGM is one of my favorite charts. Right now, I now you can see why because it has this massive long term what looks like a basing pattern okay and it's and it uh, MGM has this resistance band in the 13 area every time it gets up here close to 1223 if if MGM can get over 1290 13 it's gonna get into this area and then it starts to look really intriguing I was long at the end of last year and got caught in one of these downdrafts and one thing about MGM you know you got Las Vegas Sands also and you got Macau and you got uh, China and lots of sort of extraneous forces here and it doesn't take prisoners you have to be prepared to stay with MGM uh, for a longer haul now this pattern suggests that if I get the chance on a pullback to buy MGM I'm going to do it and I'm going to put it away um, hopefully for a reasonable amount of time so I can get the benefit of what looks like a giant base that is slowly working its way into a massive breakout that probably looks like 18 to 20 dollars if it can do it so I'm not buying it right here unless I'm forced to pay up for it every time I'm forced to pay up for anything it seems lately or in general um, I get screwed okay and I don't know if anybody else can pay up and and see those prices hold but you can't chase prices in this market that's one thing that's for sure okay that's MGM so other other charts that you'll recognize because I've been in some of these um, or because they're they're all over the news all the time all right here we go I was in four thought I caught most of it turned out that I didn't I left I knew I, I uh, in my work uh, if you go back and uh, look at the at the historical work that I did um, in the archives, you'll see that I was looking for 14 to 15 dollars. Uh, managed to get out right below 13, and the mark and Ford went up without me. This is an interesting chart because I think that good that Ford is is pretty much done. Now, if I was long Ford, I'd be really careful. We'll have to see. Ford is in the press again this this weekend, and it's. Um, relatively positive news we'll have to see if this is a bull flag and Ford can go to 15 but let me tell you something I think Ford is really really has a lid at 15 for now so if it's only going to 15 from like 1390 um, it's still a significant move but the risk I think is much greater uh, than the upside is at this point I think if Ford pulls back and the market and the, there is some sort of fear in the market. Let me put up some trend lines here and we'll see where Ford can pull back to. All right now, this is the last area of serious consolidation, and that's where I was long and I got out somewhere up here. I bought it in here, got out here, about 13, 1290, uh, 1260, somewhere in there. And if Ford does pull back, it could go to 15, but I think the pullback gets you back somewhere around you know 12 to 11 dollars so that's significant and I would wait for that so that's Ford Motor all right another one I was in that was just a beauty and I and I uh, and I tightened my stops to protect myself and it stopped me out was Bristol Myers let's go over to a weekly and you can see why I was so bullish on Bristol Myers because it had a giant base pattern this is a weekly Bristol Myers Myers chart it had a huge base pattern over a two-year period broke out and it still looks like it has some room it this base could generate a move to thirty dollars um, will it participate if the market is weak probably not but having said that if we go back to the daily Bristol 
On a pullback, Bristol looks like it should hold in this 25 to 24 area, and if it does, I'd be more inclined to look at it as a buying opportunity. That's Bristol, BMY. All right, uh, last few weeks we've discussed Cleveland Cliffs. Cleveland Cliffs is on a moonshot. It doesn't look like it's done yet, so when we condense this chart, it looks like an enormous move out of an enormous base. But let me tell you something. It looks to me like it's, it's, it's overbought, and it, it'll start to huff and puff here pretty soon. So if we look at the Fibonacci relationship of the recovery from its last high into, you know, the uh, 2009 low from the 2000, uh, where did it peak? It peaked in uh, July of 2008. So the Fibonacci's say that it passed, it passed the 50% recovery. The 62% recovery is near 80 bucks. And it closed at uh, 71.25 so this is not the easy money part of the trade but it, it projects that it could go there my sense is that it will not that it is consolidating for one more move up now now let's let's look at this for a second because cleveland cliffs had a key downside reversal on thursday and that key downside reversal is significant on high volume now, even though it looks okay, Friday was an inside day. So this, to me, is a continuation. A continuation in which direction? Well, if this reversal is worth its weight in anything, then the next move, then Cleveland Cliffs will not break the high at 73.38. And instead, maybe we'll test it, but we'll roll over into a correction that will get back into the 60 area, and that will be considered a buying opportunity. So be very careful here with Cleveland Cliffs. If it happens to take out the high at 73.38, I think it will it will go to the next Fibonacci relationship near near 79. Okay, uh, let's go to Intel, which I had my finger on the trigger a couple of weeks ago, and uh, hesitated, and it uh, gapped up. I think this was a Monday, and it I said to myself, this is a buy. If it holds here, I'm going to buy it, but. It, Gapped up like 4% on the day. Uh, so for me, it was just a chase. And I refused to do that even though it continued higher. Now, it too had a reversal day, but not a key one. Last Thursday was a reversal. Not a key reversal. It looks like it's having a normal, minor, contained correction. Now, where would that be to? Well, I would say this. That, that uh, Intel will probably, the high was uh, 22.75 I think it could pull back into the 21.80 maybe a little lower maybe it tests these highs 21.50 um, and and then whoops let me get rid of this and then we'll look we'll do the trend and we'll see where the trend is from the February low that cuts across the price axis at about 21 and a quarter so that's the area where I would be looking on a, on a uh, pullback in Intel. And this Intel chart is a very impressive chart. So if we condense it, we see you got the saucer, the handle, the, 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 the up move off of the handle. It's a classic chart. And the prior high, uh, which was in August of 08, was up near 24 and 3 quarters. And it's conceivable after the next pullback can get up there again. Uh, so Intel looks very healthy. Everything seems to be confirmed. So on a pullback, Intel would probably, um, first support is 21 and a quarter, and that's where I'd be looking. Um, let's let's uh, go over to, now, on last week I bought the, the, the uh, TAN, which is the solar, uh, solar stock index. 